Previously, it was data visualization. We talked about best practices. We talked about a styling like a pro. Those were the two sessions, knowing what do we want to do and then learning how do we want to achieve that. Today, it's the first part of data blending, the foundations of data blending. And we're back to data modeling again. We're going to work with data. We're going to shape data, reshape data, process data, and we'll see how it works out. Data modeling, data blending, part one. Data blending helps us merge data from multiple data sources into a single one. Merge data from multiple data sources into a single one. Why? Why do we need that? And why should we care? To understand why do we want to merge different data sources together, let's take a look at some use cases first trying to figure out what do we want to achieve with data blending? What are the different end results that we can achieve with data blending? So hopefully I can get you a little bit more excited about the subject before we dive in and see how to do that. The first thing we can do with data blending in data study is to combine fields from different data sources on a single chart. So we want to show in a single chart cost from Facebook ads and Google ads and Microsoft ads from T three different platforms. Using data blending, we can achieve that. We might want to combine fields, the same fields, like cost, revenue, impression, traffic, from different accounts of the same marketing tool into a single chart. So we're working with 20 clients and we're running Google ads for all of them, but we want to see roll up chart showing data, showing large data from all of those accounts. We can use data blending, not just to bring data from different tools like Facebook, Microsoft, Google, but from different Google Analytics accounts, from different Google Ads accounts, from different Facebook accounts to see that data aggregated together if we want. We can use it to de-aggregate, also aggregate the data. We'll see one example at the end of this session, which is very useful and Usually it is the only way we can achieve the result that we want. So we see how it can be beneficial. We can use it to bring different fields of different platforms and use those fields in a calculated field. So right now we saw in the data modeling before that we can have calculated fields. We can perform mathematical functions over different numbers and metrics, but they were all in the same data source. Now we want to do it from fields in different data sources. We want to calculate, for example, conversion rate. We want to calculate things that rely on metrics that are coming from different sources. We can also do that with data blending. Data enrichment and data widening. We want to enrich our data. For example, we want to look up the profit margin for each of the SKUs that we have on an e-commerce system. This is something that Maybe the client have it in a spreadsheet, they have it somewhere, profit margin, but they don't have it in Google Analytics or Google Ads or whatever tool that they're using for marketing and analytics and reporting on. We can bring that external data, that additional data point, and enrich the data that we have in that tool. This is one way of enrichment or one way of widening. Why do we call it widening? Because if you, if you imagine your data like a Google Sheet, we have like different columns. If we add more columns, to this Google Sheet, it will be wider. So for the same data set, if for sure we can look up different values, different data points, and we can add them to the same data source, we're basically widening that data source. Another example would be looking up population for a city. Not all the web, some of the website, like in a news website, broadcasting website, government websites that have a lot of traffic, they might want to actually look at metrics and KPIs like market share. How much traffic are we getting from a city compared to the actual population of that city? The population is not in the Google Analytics or whatever analytics tool that they use, but it is available in another third-party data source. Maybe for an e-commerce store, we want to look up user data from user ID. We have user ID in Google Analytics, we have user ID, CRM, but we cannot have PII in Google Analytics. We can look up all those different data points like name, surname, email address, the lifetime value, whatever data point we have access to for that user inside our CRM, we can bring it and merge it with our web data. 
by joining on a key, by joining on the user, by looking up different values for that user ID, again, widening the data, bringing in new fields in that. 